gentlemen, welcome to Have No Sphere, right here on the Iron Real Media YouTube channel. My name is Josh Corey. We have got a packed show for you tonight. We are talking Flat Earth Tours, Flat Earth Conventions, and I think we might need to revisit the moon, <laughs> so to speak. Anyway, stick around. Bound to be a good one. You know us. We are the way. We are, we are not alone. We are striving for more. We are the way. We are the way. We are the striving. Well, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Colin Turner starting off the show with a super chat for two pounds. Thank you so much, Colin. That's a great way to start off a flatter Friday right here on the Iron Realm. I'm digging it. Let's just jump right in and say hello to whoever it is we have. It's bound to be a flat just because why the hell not? That's how we do it around here. Let's just jump right in and say hello to one Mr. Zachary Zabala. Mr. Too Nice Price himself. Good times for all. The Nomad Nomad. How you doing, Zach? Pretty good, Josh. Uh, <laughs> it's been a pretty good day. Uh, got a lot of painting and cutting in done. Still not quite done. There's still, yeah, I can see how you don't like it it just gets te tedious a little bit but no um just sitting there and holding that brush perfectly steady and making it nice and neat there's something about it that just kind of calming and relaxing for the first five minutes yeah totally yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was taking a break here and there but uh yeah not too bad um beautiful weather i mean i love florida in the winter this is the place to be, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, I bet it was. It was Florida weather here yesterday. It was damn near 70 degrees. I was in a short sleeve, thinking about putting shorts on, and I've got two inches of snow. I got about a half inch of snow on the ground right now. I got about another inch and a half on the way now through midnight. So, welcome to effing Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't miss it. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I bet. Well. Let's see, somebody else who knows all about those nice, warm winters. Well, reasonably warm is one Mr. Walter Johnson, my, host, my other co-host over there on the Ironworks on Tuesdays and Friday mornings on Truth Frequency Radio. Walt, how you doing? I'm doing great, Josh. I hope you're doing well, my friend. It has been an amazing Friday. We kicked off this morning with a show that, man, we missed two in a row with your illness and our ineptitude. So it was great to hit the ground running like we did with Waking Warriors from Twitter. If you don't know her, you need to get over there on Twitter and check her out. It's Sarah Eight Smiles. Been hanging out with her for a long time. Pretty much since I've been on Twitter, she's been there. And uh, it was definitely a show to be remembered. Lots of topics. We, we focused mostly on the AI, energy yeah. attack, weather control, Man, to say we focused on something is really hard to even claim because we, just like the rest of us in Iron Realm, when, when a topic excited her, she took off with it. And uh, an amazing show, definitely for her first time out in the public eye like she came today with us. Uh, it was great. So definitely check that out if you have time. In fact, I plan on downloading it from TFR and making a little video to put up here on our channel and over on my Flat Earth Head channel because it is just a great, great show. Great introduction to Sarah, for sure. So many good sound bites, just little snippets, just little one-liners from her that we, I could fill up little 10-second videos on our channel just with her giving little nuggets of pearls and w of wisdom. It was an awesome show. I really dug it. Very natural. Uh, she fit right in. She she cut onto the vibe real quick and just settled right in and was part we of the talk. family. Right. We talked for probably another almost hour after the show because she said, man, it feels like I'm home. I'm with family. I'm like, right. That's that's what we hope everybody feels. But yep. certainly it, it felt like a, a family member came home with us this morning. So it was great. Definitely check it out. Very cool. 
We are also joined by one Mr. John Savage. John, how's the plumbing been going? I hear you doing all sorts of cool stuff, remote controls or sort of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff like that. A remote shower switch so you don't have to get in the shower and then turn it on. You, you can do it from outside the shower. So I'm really pushing the boat out on luxury, but uh, yeah, building a table for my incredibly heavy cast iron uh, radiator and busy looking after the dog who's just had his ear ripped by some little, I don't know, Jack Russell or something. So, yeah, interesting. Looking forward to the show. Poor guy can't catch a break. It's oh, he's game. having a shitty <laughs> couple of weeks. He really is. I mean, yeah, poor bugger. But, um, <laughs> ear? Yeah. No, no, no. He's, he's, it's like got a tear in it. I, I only noticed it this morning. Apparently, he was attacked by some uh, pit bull or some terrier or something or other, um, playing a bit harsh. And uh, yeah, there was blood all over it and stuff, and there's sort of gaping wounds. So yeah, we're having fun with that. But um, yeah, anyway, enough of that. Moving on. Right, bitches dig scars. I hate to bring things to a sudden halt. But there's an audio issue that just is repeatedly happening. And I just listened to the live and you certainly can hear it on there. So it might be Josh that you and I are both signed into the same account. Me trying to launch this before you got here. I'm going to hop out and pop in on my flat earth head account and see if that helps. All right. And it, it makes- definitely seems to be your audio though, from what I'm playing yeah. around with. That's what I heard as well. But wow, I didn't put that together. Well, that's yeah, bloody that good. might be it. So I'll be back. Sorry guys. <laughs> I'll kill my camera too. Uh, a, all I can do is end the meeting. Um, make somebody else a host. Okay, cool deal. And it may not end if I'm in here. I'll just make. You know, you've got all the controls. All right, I'm working on it. Go ahead, ignore me. Done, done, and done. We are also joined by the Adam Meekin. <laughs> Adam, how's your week been? Reasonably well, at least. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, it's been one of them, mate. Been one of them from start to finish, actually. I missed the show this morning. And I heard little snippets. Oh, yeah, that's the dome. And all the, and, and it's, it's, I'm lined up to listen tomorrow. Because, I, again, I abandoned. You know when it's really good? I stopped trying to listen. I think just go back fresh. Spend the time. So I am really looking forward to that. Um it, it sounded cool, guys, but yeah, it's been a mental week. People leaving. I've done everything bar T boy. I know I've been T boy as well this week, actually. But yeah, tonight, right, ended up. I was really late running, and I've, I've shared this with Robin already. I want to share this. I had a bit of parenting this evening. I've come back, and my young lad, uh, <laughs> who's 11, he's. <laughs> He's been banned for two weeks on Xbox. For, <laughs> for, for saying, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I wish you weren't my fucking cousin. To his cousin. Um, basically, he got, sh- he got ghosted, I think the phrase is, for like five or ten minutes. Um, where they were ignoring him and pretending they couldn't hear him. And like, he's lost his temper. I've told him, I've told him, I said, don't care, lad, like you're swearing. We all know we swear, yeah? We just don't do it in front of our parents. He says, and the thing that's disappointed me, son, is you've put it in writing on the text chat so you can get done by Xbox. He says, I thought I taught you better than that. So, <laughs> but the, the question I've got tonight is, which is the more heinous crime? Telling your cousin to fuck off, um, yeah, or... Grassing your cousin up to Xbox and reporting him and getting him a two-week ban. <laughs> definitely, he... definitely the latter. <laughs> <laughs> Did his cousin grass him up? Yeah, he's reporting yeah. him. And Xbox have given him a two-week ban. <laughs> he's not allowed to play online with other people. Who I is? think that's. Um, I think that's that's reaction. I think that's equal. 
quite useful, isn't it? I think that's his punishment. He's had his punishment. He was silly enough to post it, and he got he got done. What I said to him: "We all do daft things. Just don't get." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, funny. So yeah, crazy week. Finished off tonight. Made me running late. The only thing I'm not running late by is is John Josh's best excuse. You got hit by the snow, bro. <laughs> That's it. It seems like every other week I get hit by the snow. But uh, I'm going to jump out of here and log out and log back in under my personal account <laughs> since Walt's still here under Iron Row Media. You so if you that, guys, and I'll say hello to the guests. Yeah, I'm having trouble. Every time I hit the link, even though I've signed in and out under my name, it joins me with your name, I guess, because that's how I launched it, and that's how my computer's reading the invite. I don't know. It's, that could be. Yeah. Sorry, I, guys. We don't <laughs> normally do this with two, yeah. two accounts doing it. So the sound seems to be okay now, am I? Yeah, just wrong? to stop ruining things. Well, it's perfectly normal for us, really, to cock everything up at the start of the show. So it's not bad, is it? Really? I mean, last it's time we had Roxanne it. with no working mic. Does your let's say hello to Roxanne? But does your mic work, Roxanne? My mic is working. All right. Yay. Hey. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. Good evening, guys. How you all doing? Well, Very well, Roxanne. You've heard. <laughs> yeah. All have that Friday feeling. Have you ever spent a winter without snow? Well, should I? I'll put it different. Have you ever spent a winter without it being freezing yeah. temperatures? Yeah. Isn't it lovely? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I look- Ah, oh, you smug it. <laughs> Isn't it yeah. lovely? You know what? I speak to someone regularly that lives over in Tenerife and they run regular, like on a regular, out in a t-shirt and vest at eight o'clock in the morning. Meanwhile, we've got hats, gloves, scarves, three layers on, liberties. Liberties. <laughs> right. Come on then, let's bring the others in. I was going to say, so, we, so we'll, we'll carry on. Jason, you're in top left, so we'll start there. Evening, Hi, Jason. Guys. You're right, bro. You're right. Good, mate. Yeah, um, I've had quite a busy week. Um, I got invited to join uh, a new Facebook group that just recently started um, called the World Flat Earth Association, um, and it's it's uh, it's it's quite an interesting group. Um, there's actually uh, people from, literally from all over the world that have started onto this group. Um, and you know, like what they're doing is trying to create a a moderator for every country, right throughout the whole world. You know, like and and we've created like a a back channel chat where we can uh, uh, what's it uh, keep everybody informed and on what's happening with all the conferences and 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 any tours like what I'm I'm about to do. Um, it's really interesting. So I've I've got to speak to quite a few people um, so far. I, 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 I was just actually going through a few a few um, places that have joined up, but that are on the the back channel chat so far. You know, like Spain, Venezuela, uh, USA, Argentina, Egypt, Germany, Belgium, Ecuador, Mexico, and and so many more. Um, uh, it's 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 fascinating. I've been speaking to people from all over the world, all about flat Earth. <laughs> be great. Don't rough. I still struggle with the world. I know it's not like a ball, but when I say world, yes. and I hated oh, the word world. world yeah, you know, Roxanne it, pulled me up over that the other day, and she said the same. You know, she says, I don't like world. and and But, but world doesn't mean global. No, it doesn't. I know. Sorry about my language. I'll get, I'll, the word triggers me. Yeah. Um, it's like guilt by association or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's yeah. part of the whole rewriting the language that we're having to do. I mean, we're doing it with the science side for sure, but we're even having to use, just like you said, I, I catch myself saying global or catch myself saying across the globe or across the world. It's hard. It's really hard to change. So we're trying to use plane is not default, right? That's it. We're all indoctrinated. We're all brainwashed, and it's hard to shake it sometimes. Seem to be like way, way less offended by the word earth. Like, yes. when you look up the definition of world and you backtrack it, yeah, obviously it goes back to a ball. So, obviously, we're trying to go over that. But it, it's funny how a word can kind of make us go. 
and you know if it was the the the, the you know the international flat earth sorry international earth Associate. i don't know what the name of it was again <laughs> it's the world flat earth association and it's got flat earth it's about to be changed um, uh, um uh, we've got a, a suggestion uh, for a name change literally just started and we thought right from the beginning it doesn't really roll off the off, you know, off the tongue that well um, you're right so, jason rocks he triggered me that's why i had to mention it honestly he just triggered me straight away mate yeah it's well, the world it's, flat earth it's just like the, <laughs> Are you a bit bally? Is that what you mean? You're a bit bally. <laughs> hey, look, it's not my group. I was just invited to go to it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, because don't, don't forget, in other countries, world might mean kind of something a little bit more different than us. No. Example. I don't know. <laughs> on that one. Yeah. Another definition for the world. Yeah. Whilst we're doing shout outs on the chat room, shout out to Rene uh, Caluccia, I think, is it? Uh, Flat Earth family, love destroying the demonic spinning ball deception. See you at Question Everything Conference 2019, UE29.com. Love Hearty. Can I do a shout love out? Hearties. Love Hearty's face. Yeah, do a well. shout out to Robin, who's still waiting there patiently. <laughs> That's fine, kid. It's fine, John. It's all right. We saved the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, well, John. Then. I don't know about that. <laughs> some, some fairly, fairly awesome people here. <laughs> How's your week been, Rowan? It's been really, really full, actually. Not just through work and all those normal stuff, but um, on on the small side, I've been distracted by students who keep approaching me to do their media projects for flat earth i think it's because i'm on the meetup.com that's that's all i can put it down to so if anyone is running a meetup i, I really recommend it because i think every media department in every university has got a curious person in it that just thinks that's an interesting subject let's go and find the nearest flat earther so i've been across to see two groups in the last sort of seven to ten days now both in bath so let's see where that goes and and the other thing i've had is i've got a website called provetheglobe.com which challenges anyone to come up with some proofs and i've had an email exchange a guy who was a bit lazy in his response he came back eventually and he said oh, i want to set the ground i want to set the ground rules for this conversation and um i said okay well you show me your proofs and uh, we'll go from there you know let's have a skype call that's that's what it's about let's have a let's have a live conversation where you can bring them much like anthony's doing today and um i could share the emails but they are eventually quite funny because he just wants to set the precedent for what is a theory and in the end i said look it doesn't really matter what i think a theory is you've got to bring it you know you've got to bring your proofs and he just wouldn't. And in the end, I said, "Look, if you, unless you can show me something, you want to put it down now. I'll give you. I'll give you a list of things I would consider proofs of a flat Earth. So, measurable curvature, um, the proof that two pressurized systems can coexist without a barrier. Mm. And the other one was I forget now. There was three or four that I laid down, and." Um, he just got triggered in his emails and I'm going to share those emails on the website, provetheglobe.com. And, and it, and it ended. Okay. If you're not going to bring it, you're going to go on the hall of shame because I've got a hall of fame and a hall of shame and no one's made it on the hall of shame yet, except this one guy. <laughs> so he's going to make it, I'm afraid for getting triggered on emails. I mean, how, how cowardly is that? Triggered on emails and walks away. Can't even come to a Skype call, a private one, you know, hang out, a Skype call. So that's been a little bit of a distraction. But in the meantime, you know, lots of lots of things have been going on. Um, if you want me to share them, I will. Um, a few things about the convention. Yeah, sure. I, I'm, I'm still hearing that noise. Mm. Walt, are you? I'll go on mute. I, I... All right now. Be yeah, it. I've been hearing it. I don't know where. Yeah, it's it just, is. just Robin's end. It's fine. It's funny. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. Don't. Worry. 
No, Rob, but I think it might be you. I think there might be a short in your cord somewhere. I was going to say, it looks like it might be a short from what I'm seeing, too. Really? From me? Okay. It seemed to go away once you muted up. Okay. You noticed that the first 20 minutes of an IRM show turns into, like, technical help desk. It does. It's it's gone away. We talked about that this morning on TFR. How everything can be fine on a Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday. We're not live. As soon as we go live, the freaking gremlins come out. I'm not hearing it anymore, though. Nope, I'm uh, not hearing it anymore either. So maybe it's and, not. Robin. And Robin's not muted. So mm-hmm. well, this this mic works okay at work. You know when I use it for work. So. No, you sound incredibly. Yeah, it sounds great now, man. It's <laughs> every time we narrow it down, it moves to another <laughs> person's mic. I don't know. Roxanne, can you unmute? And... Of course, she's. A... I think she's gone for a drink. <laughs> no, no, she's just unmute. Okay. Are you there? Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Huh. It's got to be in there. Um, before um, Robin talks about the conventions can I just briefly mention has anybody seen um, Dr John's latest upload calling out Midwest no I've not had a chance spill it Roxanne if anyone has gone over there yet go over to Dr John D's channel at some point this evening please take a look at his most recent upload the next observation is next weekend Friday and Saturday if you want to be involved and go down there his website um his email address is on his most recent upload email him get, in touch, get involved um, please 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 pretty please take a look at his most recent upload um i think call on the plane has mirrored it already um it's, it's getting serious you know yeah i retweeted that earlier but i haven't had a chance to see it yet. <laughs> very interesting Get into the nitty gritty. That's what we're getting to. Get into the nitty. We got a response from Mick West in we last week's show. John, I might. It might be your sound. <laughs> it might be. You and Adam were the only other two that were muted when it was going on. That's why I muted up just to make sure it couldn't be me. I will mute. Sorry, I'll t- mute as well. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Is there a way we can do like a little roulette thing to like see what it is? Well, we were kind of trying to do it, but it just wasn't working so well. How am to blame Savage? Because I normally got, I used to, or historically, I got the blame for everything. So mm, for I think historically, I got the blame for everything. <laughs> so clicky, isn't it? John's it is so clicky. Damn, it could be me again. Yeah. <laughs> Even Oakley blames me for stuff. It's got to be you, Adam, with your dodgy USB cords. Take, take, take. I'm not having it. Knock, knock off headsets and... <laughs> I, shall, I shall mute as best I can then. Um... Guys, it might even be me because I'm on my mobile and it's charging at the moment. So it might even be me. I might be the one with the dodgy connection. Possibly, maybe. Move on, it's not that bad. Right, it is me. Um, it is making, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. There's nothing I can do now if, uh, other than cry. Better luck next week. Oh. Before before we get on to Robin's stuff, I did did want to go to Jason's first because there's, there's a couple of bits that Robin's going to discuss. Um and and it's probably a bit more distracting. So, Jason, where are you up to, bruv? Where are you well, going? Where have you decided not to go? Who's coming with you? What's the score? It's it's really difficult because well, they the the, the, the other two uh, alongside me that they, they know what's going on. Um, we, oh, I, I've got. I mean, we've got an announcement, but that was that was actually said uh, anyway the other day. Which is, we've now got Dave Mur- uh, Murphy who's joining the tour, which is um, awesome. He's he's coming with us for um, for two, well, I think it's about two weeks. He's coming for two weeks uh, 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 over the Eastern Bloc countries. You know, the, the what's it? The uh, I think it starts off from Br- Bratslivia. 
I will tell you. I will tell you. I'll just get my page. Bratislava. Bratislava. That's the one I wanted to say. Uh, there you go. I've got my page now. So, yeah. So, he, uh, he's joining us. Um, it's a great trip where he's, he's coming on um, at Bratislava here. Bratislava here. God. I'm just find where he is. There he is. There he is. And then, and then from there, he's joined us with a, a Budapest, uh, Moldova, <coughs> Serbia, Kosovo, Macedonia. He's, he, uh, we're going to be um, doing another interview at Macedonia where he did he, he did this interview last time. Saying so, yeah, that's uh, the famous one. With Malenko, that's right. That's the famous one. Well, yeah, Malenko has reached out to Dave. Uh, Dave's going to told him about you know like that we're doing this trip, um, and so we should be meeting up again. So is, this could be huge then in <laughs> Macedonia. Very... Matt, yes. in, in that country, he's huge. He's yeah. meeting up with Dave in the tour. Well, I was doing a bit of research on him as well. I mean, like this guy's uh, he's interviewed uh, was it prime ministers and and all sorts over there. You know, he's a, he's a big interviewer over there. He is uh, reporter. Um, so we we've got him. For, we've got a day for the the entire two weeks. Um, I think he leaves us uh, around about Slovenia. But who knows? I, I, I might actually keep him on. You know, so we can so we can carry on to Italy to. Uh, so we're all dying to get to your house. We are. <laughs> can't wait, mate. I can't wait. We can't. Um, yeah. So I mean, like that's that's kind of like what the biggest news that uh, this week is is it's Dave really. Um, but we have got some extremely big news, and I'm sorry, but we're gonna we're gonna leave it till next next time. Oh, um, good lad. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna keep you all hanging on. Um, this is. Uh, well, I think. Robin's doing a podcast with this gentleman on Friday morning, aren't you, Robin? Um, yeah. And, and, and yeah. obviously, well, they're doing a podcast with this gentleman. Um, this gentleman who, I'm just going to throw a little snippet in there. This gentleman's going to be my right-hand man for the entire journey. Ooh. And, um, and it's, it's big. It's really big. And then I'm just, that's it. I'm not going to say Is it Donald more. Trump? <laughs> <laughs> that's as far as i go on that subject um so yeah it's really exciting uh, we are so chuffed and, and we've got we, we've got so uh what's it more people that have joined the, the tour um but we're going to release them you know slowly you know these names um we're going to do it uh, we're just trying to keep the interest you know like rolling instead of like just splurting it all out in one go so so you've you've had dave murphy this week <laughs> was that um a surreptitious Way of him asking, can Dave come to my house, by the way? <laughs> there you go. Might be. Yeah. Uh, Dave's more than welcome. We, of course uh, he is. Of course he is. I've already said. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if he's staying on that long, but he's, he's very welcome to. It'd be brilliant. All the RH welcome. positives allowed in your house, Adam. I don't even know what I am. Uh, it'll be some conversation because uh, you know for the other person that will be with us, Adam. I tell you what, you it, this guy will blow your socks off. I nice. mean, like just incredible. We we chatted late one night in the bar for a bit um, at the conference at, uh, at Easter last year. Uh, yeah, top bloke, really nice bloke, uh, as well as flat earth chatting about his son and stuff like that. And it's always nice to meet somebody who's a little bit older than you. Like when we chatted to Crow, you know, it's it's always nice to get a different perspective from somebody who's no disrespect, but a bit. It's nice to have somebody who's a bit more mature than you. Yeah, well, he, he's uh, a wise man, he and is. it's in a different perspective. Yeah, it's it's good. And maybe in that environment, a bit more chewing of the cud, because there's a lot of stuff that uh, Dave's talks about that I find very interesting, Bible related, because he's very based in using the Bible as a much more um, uh, reliable source for a lot of other things than historical document. Um, that, that, that was part of the chats we were having. So, yeah, I, I, I'm more than welcome. Um, more than merrier, mate. There's plenty of room. You know what I mean? So, more than merrier. We chuffed us bits to hear that, I'm sure. Excellent. 
Yeah, so uh, as, as far as the, the rest of the tour uh, goes, uh, not many changes. Um, I, I think everything's all on, uh, oh, other than apparently I just, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have got the same, but I, I got a, a thing through the post the other day saying to uh, change my driving license very quick before the end of uh, before March um, to do with uh, the Brexit um, uh, rollout. So I'm not sure if any of you guys have received that. That was just a, a random letter I got this week. Who was that from? Uh, that uh, From DVLA, that was from. Was it DVLA? Yeah. And what uh, were they so, saying? If you pay us this amount of money, we'll give you a new driving licence, and then you won't have anything to worry about, unless, of course, the rules change between now and Brexit, and then you might have to pay again. Something <laughs> along those lines, is it? Well, it, it, almost basically like that. They're asking me to, uh, if, I, if I'm going to do any European driving, to sign up for a new licence. Hmm. I've got a Tell them to bollocks green the rules are bit of paper that says I can drive till I'm 80, as far as I know, yep. and that's accepted hey, all John, across Europe. Is yours still? I've still got a paper license. I refuse yeah. to get the photo ID. It's held together with sellotape. Mm -hmm. Whenever I hire a car abroad, they always laugh. But yep. it's never a problem. They just laugh. I say, I'm and not my, giving it up. And I'm good till I'm 70 odd. And my misdemeanors are nearly rubbed off it now. It's so old. I like to keep one on. You can barely read them, is what I'm saying. I think three <laughs> points is a necessity. <laughs> but yeah, I, I looked into that about Europe. Well, it was Australia uh, as to whether I needed the photo ID, Pippers, please. Um, thing and and uh, i was told no that the the green paper license is valid as it says until it's not valid which is when you're about 70 or 80 something like that right mm. i don't know a bit more research needed i reckon that sounds like the dvla are trying to um trying I'll to revenue generate i'll grab that bit of paper one sec but still, two weeks with Dave Murphy, that's exciting. That's a whole vacation. You could you could charge seats, take a vacation, come join the tour. <laughs> That'd be exciting, though. That'd be a lot of fun. I'd be interested to know what, like you said, charging seats is. Well, does it cost people to join the tour? Do they, what, how does that all work? I mean... Uh, we should wait for Jason to get back, really, shouldn't we? But Roxanne's around. Kind of like Forrest Gump. Just start running and see who joins in behind you. <laughs> <laughs> who feeds everyone? And who, <laughs> where's all that? What, the logistics of it all come from. And one day, I just felt like touring. <laughs> Is that question directed to somebody or everybody? Um, yourself, well, whoever's going on the tour. <laughs> so, so Jason's okay. done a runner. So I will, I will, I will say this much. Um, for this for this current tour, Jason's got pretty much a strict regime set out for budgeting and how how you know we we really got a good taster the first time round for how to orchestrate things um, daily and and try and you know stick to somewhat of a strict regime. Um, to be fair, like it is quite easy to slip into a routine of, well, we'll just do this for convenience, we'll just do this for convenience. But where the camper vans have got cooking facilities on them, Jason, I don't know if you guys know, he's a vegan, and Harry um, isn't a meat eater either. Um, so the camper van was pretty much stocked with healthy goods, and people really were very generous with their donations like adam you witnessed that for yourself so you you don't have to take my word for it adam witnessed that for himself in nottingham that lady that came out like she stacked the guys for the rest of the tour am i wrong <laughs> uh, it wasn't it wasn't so much donation it's the effort that involved someone her to, um, like that, that was not like a just a, a mod it was more than a marginal donation Epic. Like, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And and just the the, the 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 perpetualness of people's generosity and the time and the effort that was put into to to doing things like that. That was, you know, uh, something that no one foresaw happening. 
there was nothing in our regime for, oh yeah, people might bring up food and sort us out. No. And what happened was just, it was, it was, it was really an eye opener. I mean, that sort of sounds like build it and they will come sort of thing, you know, that yep. doesn't matter what you do, something will look after you along the way. So there's no sort of upfront fee. Anyone can join the tour and it's, um, it's just a case of the food will materialise somehow or is there someone's credit card that's going to take a beating if it doesn't? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so. Realistically speaking, Jason does have a set budget in place for what he's going to do on a daily basis. But realistically speaking, there will be cook, cooked food on the camper every day. But if people rock up with loads of food and you don't have to cook, what a bonus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, what is it going to be? 40 breakfasts around Europe. Jace, for you, in it, <laughs> forty different fries. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd have to forewarn everyone that um, I'm on a vegan diet myself, but you know, I make things awkward now. Fully vegan. Fully vegan. Uh, ever since flat Earth day one of flat Earth, yeah. And how are you feeling on it? Uh, really good. Uh, I, I I went vegan um, because of. I was speaking to Mark um, Pilgrim Flat Earther, who was on uh, YouTube. Um, he's a very good friend of Harry's. Um, and when I first came to the first campsite, the first, it was my first kind of introduction to kind of like with Flat Earth and sp uh, seeing Harry for the first time. Well, Mark was there, um, and he was talking about um, uh, uh, veganism and that. And I just thought, oh god, here we go again, because I've had these conversations before, and I just thought, oh, just th 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 these people don't shut up. Anyway, but it was really nice. He was he was calm with it. He was talking about it, and I was getting oh an awful lot of chest pains at the time. Um, I was uh, I, I think I was working quite a lot. I, I had four or five businesses, and I was doing ninety to one hundred hours a week, so I was quite kind of really stressed out. And uh, I was having very bad chest pains, um, and um, I, I kind of refused to go to the doctor. And you're just like you, you know I'll I'll. I was just concentrating on work and that. And uh, he told me about this and uh, he said it probably help. And uh, I thought, well, literally, uh, I like vegetables, you know, like um, I, I felt as though I didn't need meat. So I, I just made a conscious decision. And after speaking to Mark, I, I made a switch, boom, just switched like that and said no to meat, no to dairy, no to um, all of that stuff. And um, I think I noticed a massive change within two or three months. Um, all my chest pains, all my pains, all my uh, a lot more energy. Uh, just everything changed within two or three months. Um, bags of en energy for flat Earth now. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to ask at this point what Robin's eating while he's chugging down his beer. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I will show you now. Chicken, <laughs> kettle chips, sour cream, <laughs> and sweet onion. Vegan. <laughs> yeah, I've been vegan now for about three months. Okay, my I didn't know that. Yeah, my daughter came home from work and just said, she's done it twice now. She came home from work and said, someone at work says the earth is flat, converted me into flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> and and then she came home in November and said, I really want to be vegan. But I, I'd been thinking about it for a long time. And I just thought, if I'm cooking meals for everyone in the family, how do I cope with just the odd one out having to go different? And um, in the end, I thought, well, there's two of us now. So it's 2v2, you know, I make two meat eaters and two, two vegan. That's amazing. That's, I'm seeing veganism, like, snowball in um, mm. just on the topic, whether people are becoming vegan. Well, I mean, people becoming vegan are, is snowballing and, and that. But just the topic itself is is on fire at the moment. Um, not, it is. Not sure why. And in the chat room, Bob from Globebuster says, I've been vegan for five weeks and I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Wow. There's, so, there's, there's a lot I of good admit. stuff on it, isn't there? Right. Um, but have you guys seen the YouTuber Sverge? SV. He's a ex-vegan. 
talks about the harm it did to him in terms of new, uh, long term. Now goes around eating raw meat, raw fish. <laughs> oh yeah, in, in I've public. heard about that. <laughs> it's yeah, it's gross. I, uh, I I like I I don't eat a lot of meat. I I like Valentine's Day. I had a steak and I really enjoyed the steak. But actually, for most meals, they they're not purposely vegetarian. But pasta with a tomato mm. sauce and and bread is is just the way it is. It's quite natural for me to not have meat. In it. like tonight's meal, I had um, the, uh, grilled cheese salad with some with eggs. Here's a quandary then for the vegans. I have my own chickens. If I stop eating the eggs, what should I do with them chickens? Play with them. Play with them till they die naturally. <laughs> Mm. I tried. To play. I must admit, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to get bent out of shape if one day I go into a restaurant with friends and there's nothing on there except vegetarian that I like. Mm. You know, if there's a if there's a vegetarian lasagna, I'm going to probably choose that, and I'm not going to scour every supermarket shelf for everything I buy because this is a journey, and you know. That's I'm not, that's what I'm not going to, to beat it. myself up if I can't do it. You yeah, know? I think that's the important that's thing: is not to, not to be utterly rigid on on these sort of things. I mean, it's mm. it's okay to dip in and out. I mean, it's not going to kill you. But I, don't I think know. on the whole, it's the eighty twenty rule, isn't it? I'm 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 not giving myself license to just do what the hell I want. But on the whole, the eighty twenty rule should work, or ninety ten. You know. That, if, um, that seems a more achievable thing for someone like me, Robin. You know what I mean? If I was going to look mm. towards really refining my diet and heading towards vegan, I think if I set my target of being a vegan, it would just fail miserably. Do you know what I mean? Because I do enjoy... <laughs> but actually, that kind of ratio, which, has, like I said, I don't think I'm far off. I think, for me, vegetarianism is is more than achievable. Um but veganism, I think, for me, I'd struggle. I do. Yeah, but that, that's only that's... because uh, you, you haven't taught yourself these new ways yeah. of cooking, these new meals, and there's probably lots of meals there that you that you've never heard of yet, and uh, and you do you, you you just find other ways around it, and uh, it, because I thought myself, I didn't want to give myself a label as I'm a vegan. I hate that. It bugs the hell out of me. It does. You know, I I, I almost agree with uh, what Robin just said. Then you know, like um, I don't want to be a, a, I was an arsehole about being a vegan. I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I like, like an ex smoker. Well, I think if I, if I slip in some um, in something, you know, I find out later that something was in it was it in a particular ingredient of something that I've just eaten. Then I'm not going to get bent out of shape over it. You know, it just is what it is. You know, like, but I do choose to 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 shop a certain way. You I know, think like, you hit the nail on the head. There is that a lot of people probably don't do this or don't they don't know how to do this because they don't know how to. It, make a vegetarian let's just be simple and, and make a vegetarian meal i mean i've got cookbooks of vegetarian meals and i was an ex-chef but it, it's still something that i wouldn't entirely know how to i mean i love salads but i always have either meat or fish with them and i i, I eat mountains of them and then i'm starving about an hour later so it's always it's how to you know compensate and get that um, filling feeling that that you're in. I, I don't know. It's mm. difficult. Well, I've realised that um, you can make a pasta bake on one side of the kitchen with chicken in it, and on the other side you can make. Uh, I, I go to Lidl may, most of the time, and and then top up at Sainsbury's, and you can buy like a, a vegan haggis. Sounds sounds a contradiction in terms, but inside that haggis which isn't made from some kind of gut inside is not awful. It's um, Who knows like a really, a it's like a really good mix of vegetables and onion and. Oh mate, Robin, uh, well you had Burns night and I, I read my Burns speech the other week and um, hmm. well, I always partake a little bit of the traditional haggis, but my favorite <laughs> and they always get it is the vegetarian. It's, it's got nuts 
onions, carrots, and and all the herbs and spice. It's infinitely better it's than the meat one. I, I I I actually will eat the meat one because I got used to the. Mm. Uh, it was a lot, and and yeah, there's not awful in and. What I've wanted to do for a long time now, which I have never done, um, is wanting to go to a high end vegetarian restaurant or vegan restaurant and have them serve me stuff that I take one bite of and go, wow, that's amazing. And it's got no meat in it. Uh, that's yeah. what I'm looking for. But hopefully you'll be proud of me in so far as at the, I, I gave up pork at the start of this month, um, purely for medical reasons and experimental reasons um mm. observational reasons whatever you want to call it but it is cause and effect i suppose it is uh scientific um, Same back to you, didn't he? <laughs> big bump no no you know why I'm, I'm doing it and um yeah so I'm, I'm i'm up and for me to give up pork wow i mean i love bacon i love sausages i love ham i love <laughs> anything to do i black pudding you name it i anything and I've gone to, you know, chicken sausages and turkey rashes and all sorts of stuff. But I, I'll report back if I if I see any uh, if I get any positives from it. But um, yeah. I've... Well, a question for the vegetarians because it's something I've weighed and tried to figure out my whole life. Is it not just a health thing? Is it also an esoteric thing in that you know the consciousness of the animals and. I, I mean, have, I know we're herbivores. I know how our mouth is designed. I know how our enzymes are designed. I know that we have these in our body. Now, whether they're supposed to be there, whether it's designed that way, evolution, whatever. But meat eating teeth. Do we actually both. have teeth? We have both, right? Herbivore. I mean, uh, omnivore. We can do both. Okay. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, animals, yeah, but to me, plants have just as much consciousness and life and they get their, you know, energy from the sun. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think we should all just be sun gazing and getting our energy. I think mm -hmm. we shouldn't even be eating. Probably too. But back to, back to the vegan haggis, you break it open and there's a perfect mince. So you make your pasta bolognese or your pasta bake or your... um lasagna with you because you can buy you can buy vegan cheese and you can buy vegan butter you can buy all sorts really that are substitutes well what's what's it made of like say vegan cheese what's it made from <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's a good question you're talking to a guy so probably too busy to really check i mean i'm just thinking soylent green i'm thinking <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I i for myself i don't do like the cheese um for myself i feel like there's there's certain products i, I don't feel the need to exchange you know like and there is other products not you know like that i've enjoyed you know like they they do like um uh vegan sausages and i defy anyone to mm. uh, tell the difference with these vegan sausages they they taste like sausages they're you nice know. aren't they mate yeah, yeah I've tried I think them. The, the linda mccartney ones they're, they're just awesome they are what are they called mm. sorry i'm ranking notes here uh the linda mccartney's uh sausages uh they i mean like if, if if i give you a sausage butty with some sauce on there or something you just wouldn't be able to tell the difference it's it's a sausage butty <laughs> i'll be the judge yeah. of that i'm a sausage connoisseur i've actually <laughs> made my own sausages from Hmm. from sheep intestines and from from start to finish i, I did the hugh fernley wicking stall sausage day and a, or a, what is it a pig in a day yeah so um yeah i'll let you know on that front well well i don't i don't do the cheeses at all i i just i i i tried that first and i couldn't find a cheese that actually because I, I was a cheese connoisseur. I mean, I loved all my matures, you know, like, and uh, I, I loved all of that. But like to go on to the, I just felt so uh, vegan cheese just didn't cut it. It just wasn't the same. It's horrible rubbish. Uh, Is there a problem with cheese because it's not hurting the animal? Or I mean, it's an animal product. <laughs> But it's, it's not. It's what happens to the, the what's it the the, the the cows afterwards? You know, like because in order to have like milk, you know, like um, then you have to have um, you, you have to make them fertile. So you, there will be bobby calves, and then and then what do you do with them? And they go off to the slaughter, and you know, oh, like, and then once once you have spent cows, what do you do with them? Well, they go off to the slaughter. 
you know so so although we kind of think our milk's okay cheese is okay not really so you does know, a like, cow only produce or a goat or whatever do they only produce enough milk to sustain however many calves they've, no. they've got or well, this they... is the this is what's horrible about milk production is that they have a thing called recombinant bovine growth hormone and it just basically makes them produce more milk but the problem is that it sort of comes out in the milk as well and i don't think even through homogenization does it actually get out all that rgbh actually no, josh rgbh cows have not been shown to be any different than cows not treated no, i'm just being silly because that's what's printed on every milk carton in america now trying to convince you that that's not a problem is that why i've I mean, got moved probably <laughs> uh, yep and probably why <laughs> prepubescent girls are passing for 23. I mean, I'm I I drink or used to drink raw milk. It's now been banned, so I, I don't generally drink milk at all. But it's unhomogenized, and it's um, whatever it is. But um, I I'm fully on board with the sort of ethical side of husband uh, animal husbandry, and uh, if, you know, if I was a hunter in the woods, it would be an honour to you know sort of take down a deer and then um thank it for its life and I, I don't know maybe zach is probably more um in tune with this sort of thing but i i'm I, you know i wouldn't want to eat an animal that i uh, that had been poorly treated um and i'm more than happy to um process an animal myself and eat it but um yeah from the ethical point of view I understand that you know battery hens and and pigs that are living in tiny cells and that sort of thing. That that's that's not a good thing. But th what about the um, sourcing your your meat and milk and cheese and all that from ethical um, or even your own farmyard? What was is there something wrong with that? Roxanne, would you mind muting up? Now it's you this time, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one popping and making noises now. Yeah, Roxanne. I, yeah. I find it with, uh, with like, for myself and uh, the ethical side of things, um, I I found it difficult to begin with because I, I didn't have no compassion towards, um, like, cows, pigs, chickens and all that. No compassion whatsoever. I just seen them. I, I just seen, was it nice looking packets in, in the shelf of a supermarket? So, like, to, it's very hard. So, although I made the switch and the decision to do it for health reasons, I don't think you can switch on compassion towards animals just like that. It, it, where does that come from? You know, like, I had compassion towards pets. You know, I've got dogs, cats, and um, and and I would have compassion. I you know, love them to bits and that. And and uh, but like towards animals, um, I seen them purely as a commodity. Just it was food. That's all I ever saw it. So, but I think afterwards, you know, you become vegan and you do become aware, and you see a lot of films, uh, very a lot of disturbing films, and then you start. I mean, like there's there's one called Earthlings. I defy anyone to watch that film and not cry while you're watching it. And and and, and then yeah, if if you pull out a bacon sandwich while you're watching it, there's something wrong, mentally wrong with you, you know. Like, um, but then we we can make a decision afterwards, and it's a conscious decision whether or not we decide to go vegetarian or or vegan. But I think after watching such a film, you should cut down. There's no doubt about it. You should cut down. I mean, there's something, it's like, you know, Al Gore's film or whatever that they show to children that they can't help crying about these wasted away polar bears and uh, things like this that, you know, man is destroying. And, and An inconvenient truth. Yeah, and in... in the, when you An intolerable look into it, pile of bullshit. It's, it seems to be propaganda i i don't have the time or the motivation to actually look into the um you know whether it's propaganda or not but i'm, I'm open to it all and i'll, I'll read sources of, that i trust but um yeah it's an interesting one for me i maintain a hard firm disconnect from the yeah. packages that i get in the grocery store yeah, that that my wife does, and I did, you know, like, and you know, and and that's a that's a choice, you know, like, and you know, you've that, that's okay. Um, well, I've been a hunter, and I've taken down my own meat. I'm not 
I've, you know, dressed it. I've not processed the whole deer. The way we've had it processed and eaten everything and used it all. Um, in my <laughs> age that I am now, I don't know that I could shoot that same deer that I shot when I was 12, 13 years old. I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I have that animal compassion, but I maintain that disconnect so that it doesn't extend into the grocery store. I leave it, leave it outside the automatic doors. But is that because you've got a grocery store? I mean, if you were absolutely starving, um, I don't, I was a nomad. If I was living the nomad life and I I had, yeah, I would, no, I would not think twice, but I would, I would, I, that's a lie. I would absolutely think twice. And I yeah, would, no. would be guilt written, but I would know that it's me or him at this point, but that's what it would take. It would take it literally have to be my life or the animals that I'm going to have to kill to eat. Cause that's Mate, the way I do it. I, I sort of try and practice gratitude so that, you know, whatever I'm eating is, uh, it gets my gratitude for being on my plate, you know, and I'll do the same with a glass of water. It's like, thanks for the water or whatever it, it's just as a, you know as simple or as small as that but um i don't have guilt about it um no anyway on that subject let's move forward <laughs> i tell you i tell you one last thing guys a really good recipe is a thai green curry with chickpeas sweet potato spinach and it's amazing I got it from um, I got it from online recipe, but um, basically, if you if you chop your peel and chop sweet potatoes yep. into cubes, and you whack them whack them in the oven for twenty minutes with a bit of a spray oil, perhaps, and then you bring them out, pop them in a pan, some uh, some chickpeas. Put some um, Thai green paste in with it, some coconut milk, and then some spinach in as it as it sort of reduces down. That is an awesome curry. Yeah, yeah. Give you something to add towards that. Go for yeah. it, Jason. <laughs> Chuck in some jackfruit. Some and jackfruit, eh? Yeah. Sounds good. Right, I'm expecting one hell of a vegan buffet at this conference. And <laughs> well, if Tony, if that's Tony not, Riley says he wants to eat a scappy. Oh, whilst we're on the subject of Riley, a shout out to Riley because he held his show up for us tonight and sent people over. So thanks, Tony. You're Thank a you. proper gem. Thank you, mate. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, man. Love you. Thank you to everyone in the chat room. I'm so sorry I can't see the chat room as well. To anyone who said I ignored them. Absolutely. I shout out. Absolutely. I've seen the chat room for the whole evening, but big hugs to you all in the chat room. I'm, I'm on my mobile, so I can't use the youtube app at the same time it's not letting me it just says can't connect to the internet but i'm on the internet so big hugs to you all and sorry to anyone that i haven't responded to it's not that i'm ignoring you i just can't see you i got a couple of shout outs for the chat ranty i've seen you've been missing me i've heard you moving house so uh hope you're settling in well pal uh the ranty restful time in it worse than a divorce moving house Mm-hmm. Shout out to to Ronnie there, and and one other one. Shout out to Bob there on Globusters. I'm going to um, he's invited me in on Sunday, so I'm gonna rock up at some point and uh, give my two penny worth. Nice, thank you, Bob. Love that man. And I see Cammy in chat as well. Hello, Cammy. We need to get you on here, Cammy. We've been trying to do that since day one, and still haven't had that happen. We're aiming for the fifteenth. Moon night. That'll be good. So, Robin, are we going to um, move on to your yeah. uh, announcements that we've got with regards to the FA convention in the UK? And uh... Yeah, so a few things that we can announce is that um, allegedly Dave, Dave Murphy, is speaking on the Sunday. So very happy about that. Roxanne and I did a podcast just this week. Um, it was a great podcast, loads of people in the chat and um, really happy that Dave is coming. And not to mention that, you know, when I dropped the question on the Globe Glide tour, then 
he said, yeah, I'm getting involved in Macedonia and X number of other countries, which was just brilliant because what will happen is uh, Jason will leave the, leave the convention at one o'clock. Eat what rocks. Yeah. If you, so uh, if Jason, uh, Jason will leave the convention at one o'clock on the Sunday and if, if um, you know, he will take one or two people out with him. But then um, Dave will join him. I think the the date for Macedonia is the 23rd of October. I think the capital's Scott Scottke, if that's how you pronounce it. But I, I know that um, he's booked out several dates on either side of that city. So, you know, Dave Dave will be speaking on the Sunday in, in the morning, and obviously delighted to have him with us. Um, couple more announcements which I can't yet make but all I will say is um, please stay tuned to Roxanne and my channel on Tuesday night because we, we, we're dropping a podcast Monday night and they're doing a premiere on my channel on Tuesday night which will be another one of our speakers uh, and I know this will actually draw a lot of people in so We've we started selling tickets and we've we've got some tickets in the bag, which is great. Loads of inquiries, and a couple of other things is that um, I, I did my Bristol meetup this weekend, just gone, and the lovely Dan and Kelly, who've been coming for a while now, made a great suggestion. Why don't you brand up a T-shirt and a sweatshirt with a convention logo? on or a globalized tour logo on and sell them to raise funds for the tour so that's what we're going to do we're going to get the <coughs> t-shirts and sweatshirts branded up and we're going to host them on a website probably teespring and we're going to sell t-shirts and sweatshirts take some stock with us on the day but obviously with plenty of lead up time when jason wants to uh, you know hit hit the GoFundMe button, we'll have some produce for people to commemorate both the convention and also the tour, which I think, great, great idea, Dan, fantastic idea, because, you know, it's good to buy a product if you've done, so, if you've been somewhere special and you want to commemorate it and, you know, take something away, then how good would it feel to also know that, you know, if you spent X amount on a t-shirt that, X percent is going towards Jason's tour and it's funding what will be, I'm pretty sure, the the biggest event of this year in Flat Earth. Well, I don't know how you top that, but... Um, I, I'll, I'm one for the merch as the guy saw me come back. I came back with stuff for me, stuff for them from the last conference. It's mm. I don't care if it's consumer. It's something for my... You know when I'm dribbling in the nursing home? It's something for my special box under my bed these sorts of things so i don't care i'm i'm well up for that i'll have a i followed jason on the fe tour t-shirt thank you thank you marilyn in the chat room to say you'd pay top dollar for that well yeah absolutely if you've been there you've been part of the tour why wouldn't you want a t-shirt i mean jason if we can get all the dates on the back like a you know a concert tour dates or something like that how good would that be I think um, this is uh, this is how you fund the perpetual flat Earth tour. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't hold, don't uh, care for what you say there, John. <laughs> um, but Jason, um, what what we're working on is a bit of branding at the moment. I, I was probably going to go with Jason's branding, but if he's got any other ideas, we'll we'll come together on those so that we can tie up the branding for the convention and the branding for the tour. And either way, all the funds and all the profits are going to the tour, which I think is fab. And then, and then um, finally, I'd love to announce that um, I've spoken to Adam today, this afternoon, and he's very kindly said that he'd like to be the convention's roving reporter for the weekend. And um, I would be absolutely honoured and delighted if Iron Realm Media could represent at the convention and have full kind of access to the speakers and the delegates if they want to do interviews. But what I'd love to have here is a real kind of 
what's going on type raving reporter feel to the convention. So um, I do not want to do live streams where people pay. It's very clear on that. I'd love to have Adam just go in maybe for five minutes of each speaker and then cut the stream. So, you know, you will not get access to these presentations unless you come. That so, sounds brilliant, man. And you had a little Freudian slip with raving for a second. You said raving reporter, but you had it right. <laughs> you had it right. Well, raving, <laughs> raving. I'll do raving. a bit of dancing. Old school. Raving. I can do it. The three R's. I'm sure this. <laughs> a raving reporter. Oh, that's the first time I've heard of it. First I've heard of it. I think that's a great idea. And Adam, like, yeah, I knew you'd love to do that. Um, Robin, when you say the you're not going to see these presentations unless you're there yeah are you going to be like merching or selling the um you know a dvd recording of the presentations afterwards for people how i mean what if people just physically can't get there but they really right. would like to see the presentations not necessarily for free obviously but yeah do you, do you know what that very idea actually actually creates stress in me and <laughs> only because I will be placing all my trust in a in a media provider who may or may not succeed and I know the night the chances are 90 percent 100 percent is we're pretty much there I could I could sell them I never thought of doing it afterwards that is an idea but the whole because we're in we're in the country and I've tested the Wi-Fi and I've tested the various phone connections on Vodafone, T-Mobile, EE, e e I've tested a few of them. What I don't want to do is run the risk of people putting money up front for a live stream and then failing to de deliver because I'm not I'm not in a really really high powered a broadband area no i totally understand where you're coming from there that would probably give me a heart attack um, <laughs> yeah. from an IT well, not to mention it's quite expensive to hire a company to do that professionally sure sure um, but to actually but, record every um presentation and then uh, yes you can record it yourself and then produce it to dvd or even paid mp3s or something along those lines it doesn't even have to be videoed but it would be nice if it was but um if if a recording didn't work then that would literally not be available and not up shit to yeah. anyone who, who, who couldn't get there but it'd be lovely to be able to you know in years to come to be able to order that back catalog and and see the conference even though you couldn't be there you, you may Thank be you. five at the moment that is a really sweet idea and because it's not so like time bound and you know stressful to do live i think that's not a bad shout okay well i'll take that away and try and figure out how we're going to make that happen because that sounds like a good idea even just a little handy cam on a tripod to set up in a strategic location uh yeah. It, I, I wish I was there. I could so much do all that for you guys. Ah. There's, there's, <laughs> been, there's been worse coverage of previous conventions that, um, you know, I'm glad were made, you know, on their on their tape to tape and this sort of thing from the from the 80s and even the 70s. Um, that uh, you know, who knows who who will want to listen to this. Yeah, in 10 20 years time well let me tell you there's gonna there's the speakers that we've got are absolutely phenomenal and i just can't see how this event won't be such a memorable thing because we've got the globe light tour rolling into town having done two weeks a big friday night bash Roxanne and I presenting and that. Well, we we are kind of, Roxanne's the it's highlight. It's going to be awesome. Ooh, right. the, the, whole gonna be awesome. the whole speaker and circuit is just going to be phenomenal. You're, you're making history, and it would yeah. be such a shame not to record it. Mm -hmm. mm, I got to get there. We were talking about raving earlier. Yeah, I've <laughs> I've got a, a, a VHS cassette of me going to my first rave, and mate, look, yeah, you got a big box, little box. Cardboard yeah. box. <laughs> Throwing some shape. Real quick for a second yeah. here. We have some shout outs for some people in chat. We do those Turner. super chats. 
shouted us out a little super chat there. And then he got underbid by one penny or not a penny, I guess. What, what is the denomination yeah, there? Penny. Is it a penny? Okay. In for a penny in for a pound, I suppose. Dan W. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to waking warrior Two has joined us in chat as well. That is Sarah eight smiles who was on our truth frequency show this morning on the iron works with us again i'm going to plug that until i get it over here on the channel so you can watch it because it is amazing you should go see it or actually go hear it you'll see it here i'll shut up <laughs> that's my tomorrow afternoon walter yes so yeah i think the buzz in this place is just going to be phenomenal and you know I, I didn't realize when i first when when charlotte first went in to see the venue that it could actually take 500 during the day I thought if I get over 200 and maybe maybe increase where I was not last uh, where Gary and Didi were last year but the reality is the community's grown or the the you know the community's grown so much everyone's channels at least doubled in the year plus there's so many more joins awake would love to be part of it and who wouldn't want to connect with people that are like-minded on the same wavelength and you can get on with and just you know spill your guts and say you know i wanted to chat about flat earth for months but i haven't had anyone to talk to um how good would it be to just share a whole weekend like that where you're in the pub you're sharing dinner and you're watching some awesome presentations i, I don't see the downside so fingers crossed we you know we get over the two three hundred to, well, certainly over 200. My, my target is 300. But in reality, if we, we could get as high as four or 500 if we sell lots of day tickets on top of the residential. So let's see what happens. Just thinking out loud here, I heard a commercial on the radio just days ago about some kind of special programming, special program they're doing with one of the airlines. I'm not saying any names. If you do the research, you'll find it. But they're offering packages to Amsterdam. So what we should do is get a group here together in the States and all like group mm. up and make a trip out of this whole thing and be there. I want to be there. Yeah, I think we fun. could do it. If as well, if you're a mud flooder, come to go to Amsterdam, try and find find the mud flood buildings. Make a trip of Europe, go to Paris, go to Madrid. How awesome would that be? Yeah. Um, I wanted You're to say, selling it. Uh, sorry, when, when we um, what's it, leave on the UK convention, um, Diddy, who's organizing the, um, uh, um, the Amsterdam convention, she's going to be leaving with me. Um, so when she leaves with me, we'll be going all the way uh, to the, uh, the, the uh, down to France and um, Spain, Portugal, and round again and back Switzerland. And uh, should be we're heading straight back to Amsterdam. Um, after we do the Amsterdam convention, uh, the day after as well, we're doing a um, an Amsterdam um, activism event there in the streets of Amsterdam as well. So, yeah, if anyone wants to come from the States and that, you know, like, you have to give yourself one more day as well because right, we won't right. give with us. I'm, I'm forgetting another thing. Thanks, Jason. I'm forgetting another thing is on Tuesday, the podcast drops for Roxanne and I, and this guest speaker has also announced to Jason during that interview that he'll be joining him. Mm. So Monday, Monday, if you've got a subscription, if you, if you subscribe to the podcast, Roxanne and Robin's podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play and SoundCloud, you can get the podcast and um, it will drop Monday, probably about 8 p.m. And then we premiere on Tuesday night. And you will find out that this person is joining Jason, probably in Ireland, don't we think? <laughs> I think we are. I, I think, think I think he's agreed. He's happy to come we, early and join. I think we, we're we ninety five percent sure it's it's he starts there. Yeah. So well, I think on, on that note, already, Josh, he may have already dropped the <laughs> dropped the diamond chat. He may have let the cat out of the bag a little bit. <laughs> Although he may have been just hinting around. I don't think he said anything officially. But mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> especially when you say where he's picking up from, if you know who it is, then it's pretty obvious. But ah, no, no, no not necessarily. Uh, ah, we've got, we've got lots of big names. Ah, ah. Ooh, see, this is exciting. 
<laughs> you don't know. You, you've you've guessed well. Yes. And your money is safe in this house, <laughs> but you, you you've also missed something else that's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> on, on that on that note, Josh, there was right. something me and Robin were talking about earlier that maybe Friday on TFR. Give a, give a quick rundown on this because there's a lot about to happen next week. Um, thought it might be worth a TFR shout out as soon as we can fit it in, but um, hundred percent Friday. There. No hell yeah, um, that was hell yeah. You got nothing going on on TFR. <laughs> Space lettuce, please <laughs> save us. <laughs> Killing your Walt in it. <laughs> So watch this space, Monday and Tuesday are big days for us. And um, Friday too next week, there'll be, there'll be some more. But I think you should stay tuned Monday and Tuesday. Have you, got, have, have you guys got um, a podcast app on your phones? Because I recommend Overcast, which is just a really good app. You know, it just, here it is. It allows you to um, play the podcast, double speed, boost the voice, rewind, fast forward. It's just a great app. You listening, John? <laughs> and subscribe because um, you can just get the news first. We tend to do the podcast first and then uh, promote on a on a on a premiere a few Sorry. days later. Robin, I've got a Nokia 5210. How do I get that? <laughs> I, used to have a, I used to have a friend at work who had one of those, and he would just smooth it like this. Uh, sorry. He would stroke his finger across the top of it like this and go, no, it don't work. <laughs> <laughs> he used to crack me up. Mm. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not fluent in swooshing. <laughs> Don't blame you. No GPS tags on those bad boys. <laughs> no, nope, definitely not. Um, the, I, I was having trouble trying to get David Weiss's app working on my wife's swoosh tab fondle slab, and I just couldn't get it going. And he, he sent me how to do it, and I, I just thought, no, I'll give it to the kids. They'll they, they'll work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fair dues. So, so that's pretty much it. My announcements, guys. There's more there. Like I say, there's more coming, which I can't, I can't share now. But um, well, feconvention.com is where you buy the tickets. And if you want to, if you want to become part of the the Facebook group, there's a Globe Lie Convention twenty UK twenty nineteen Facebook group. Oh, you need to hook them up with the Facebook group you were talking about, Jason. Yeah, let me pop them in the chat. I'll, I'll pop um, Jason's Facebook group. And also the world, the, Effie. And the world one Jason can do. But um, How is world uh, <laughs> synonymous with ball? I don't understand that. It's not. It just feels it. <laughs> was the point I think both me and Roxanne were making. Phonetically, it's, you know, spun around. Yeah, I, I get that. The world, yeah. Whirling well, in well, a world. Jonathan Wass. Yeah. yeah, I will keep you in suspense, Marilyn. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> such a tease. You're such so a tease. We're going to round out in a minute then. Jason, have you got anything you just want to reiterate or and, and then just give a shout out for your site where people can contact you, beg for a place on the tour, bribe you for a place on the tour, whatever's. Um, no, I think... Um, I'm, I'm, am I speaking? Yeah, I am. Yeah, uh, no, I think uh, I think we've said everything uh, for, this, uh, for this week. Uh, have we got some really big... Big names to uh, to uh, shout out next um, next week, next within the next couple of weeks. Um, we don't want to give it you all, to give it all to you um, this week. Um, 
Yeah, no, it's not much more to say. It's a shame. I, I, I wanted to, um, was it, tell you guys one other name this week, and uh, I, and I'm, I, I, I can't. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> so lots more to come. That's great There's news. So much more to come. There really is. Um, yeah. Other than uh, give a big, uh, what's it, uh, uh, up to Diddy and Gary. They're, they're getting on with their convention and that and. Um, although we've got, we talk about the UK convention uh, this weekend uh, and, and the European tour and that, um, but we, we, we've got the Amsterdam convention and uh, so looking forward to that as well. Um, that's going to be a, uh, the very fact that we've got it so, so, so close by, but in another country as well. Brilliant. Can't wait. So just asking for a friend, um, if he wanted to be picked up in say Exeter and, uh, join the tour all the way down to Adam's place and then stop there for a little while and maybe pick the tour up back from Adam's place back to Exeter. Would that be a, a go? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no we're, we are, uh, we're starting to get quite full now. Um, there's a, a few places left, but um, I've, I've nearly, um, I've nearly, I've nearly filled the whole tour up. Nearly. You're, you're going to need a road train soon. You're going to need one of these like <laughs> sixty foot road trains or something. Well, well, funny you should t- uh, say that. Me and Roxanne are working on something. <laughs> I was going to say is the contingency to get. I told you it was going to yeah. turn into a gumball rally, didn't I? Well, well you, you, you know what Roxanne always says: lemonade uh, versus champagne. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we've got a lemonade tour and a champagne tour, and uh, we're just leaving it in Roxanne's hands, and maybe we'll have the champagne. I, I thought Roxanne liked lemonade and champagne pre-mixed by Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> Or only when it's on a deal. <laughs> I, I'm seeing the film Convoy here. I, I'm seeing that is the key word, Convoy. But yeah, mercy sakes alive. We've got a convoy of National Lampoon, which would be the Rags version, or we've got the Riches version, which for now will be undisclosed until we have more information on what the possibilities of that might be. It's mm. it's follow follow Adam's Porsche. Yeah. Um, um, Jason, we have to we have to say that Roxanne is connecting more people and energizing more people than we could possibly do on our own. Listen, guys, so, out. I don't know if he's in the chat room, but shout out to Richard Lopez because I got shown by the best. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he, Roxanne is doing so, so much behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, seriously. But that's what it's about. Once you know, people know they're not living on what they were taught they were living on. It's just about putting people together and saying, okay, let's make as much together. We're strong. Like, as long as we can all say that we're not advocating for things that none of us can vouch for. That's my new political correct way of saying it. Let's not vouch for things and advocate for things that that is going to cause conflict. And as long as we can do that, together we're strong. Because I think that's where the spats and division come, with people being, um, you know, because we've got to respect everybody's pursuit of truth. Like Jason said, it's everyone's personal journey, right? So obviously there are going to be, you know, divisions and conflictions, and not everybody's going to be everyone's cup of tea. And I've said that a million times before. But as long as we can find a way to and become respectful of one another even if there's been divisions in the past even if we can come together and you know a friend of mine said to me today you know that here's a good example like that I've, I've witnessed people out there in the community I won't say any names I've definitely witnessed people out there in the community if we're using the um, analogy of an olive branch I've seen people putting 99% of the olive branch out and other people not going that 1% like we need the, the one percenters to just move that one percent and, and let's try and find a way to move forward together. We can't agree on everything. Let's agree to disagree on some things. But we're all adults here. Like we've all got to understand this is the biggest mug off life has ever known. That like we've all been mugged off mm. in the worst way possible. Those of us that are angry, let's respect that those of us that are angry, they're angry. Yeah. Those of us that are a bit more calm, I mean, I'm not I'm not one of those calm people, by the way, as you all probably know. I try. I'm trying to grow, like all of us are. I'm trying to better every day, every week. Nobody's perfect, least of all me. But 
like if we can try, like I said, somehow to try and mediate our way through this and try and find a better understanding of how we can push this forward, get it socially accepted, and then have that civilized argument, because the civilized argument's not happening. Learned individuals think they're coming prepared and they're not. Like, they're, I don't even have to mention the recent examples. Robin's, um, Robin's short documentary, your documentary, the guy, was laughing and joking but it wasn't a laugh and a joke for him really because he he thought he was prepared robin and he wasn't the guy thought he was prepared with dave murphy and he wasn't like these learned individuals that are coming to debunk it or or to be a naysayer to it they're, they're stumbling after 30 seconds and then it's an awkward silence so while we're not having civilized discussions about this because people aren't taking it seriously we're gonna keep going around in circles like it's been for the last three, four years. So once we start learning how to work together and growing, which I'm still doing myself, I've got a long way to go. I think we'll get there and sorry, like Jason says, there's no off button with me once I start. No, I think well said, Roxanne. Absolutely well said. You know I what? Think it rocks. Like, a bit... grow, I just wanna give a shout out to the people that are helping me grow, yeah? As an individual, yeah? Marion Lesby, yeah? First and foremost, I want to give a massive shout out to Marilyn Wisby. That lady is full of words of wisdom. Like she's she's got the t-shirt, she's all sent it back and told them to stick it where the sun doesn't shine. Like, you know, there are so many people out there that are helping one another grow and 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 sharing life experiences. And, you know, even from people that I've had divisions with, like I I, I watched Beyond the Imaginary Curve at one point. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of channels out there that are helping people to grow despite the divisions. There's people out there doing a lot of good work. You know, you've got Nathan Oakley's debate channel, all the guys that are associated with this channel, Mark, Patricia. There is a lot of people out there, Globebusters, journalism, the list is endless. We, we'd all have to have an itinerary of, uh, you know, 15 pages worth of, of list of names of people. Your showreel is a brilliant example of that, Robin, where you put an inundation of people in there of people that are getting out there despite the ridicule, despite the division, despite the trolling, despite the gatekeeping, despite the tomatoes being thrown at them and you know the social exclusion in their social circles. It's not it's a thankless task talking about this. Until it's socially accepted, I think we've we've got a lot of work to do as far as that's concerned. And that's why activism for me is where it's at. Here, here. I yield. Is that what it is? I yield the floor. Yeah. <laughs> well said. <laughs> well said. I'm so sorry I can't see the chat room. Big love to the chat room. Well, I reckon that ought to do it at least for the first half. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think anyone could have wrapped it up better yeah. than that. Right? Oh, I I don't don't the same. Those that are still listening that I didn't fall to sleep. Um, and, and yeah, fair enough, in the next episode, talk about it. But next weekend is Dr. John's Observation. Please look at Dr. John's channel. And next weekend is Speaker's Corner as well. For those of you that can get to Speaker's Corner at the end of the month, next week is the last Sunday of the month as well. So, yeah. Cue that music. Thanks for having us on, guys. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank Roxanne, Jason, Robin. Awesome. Are you going to stick around for the second half, or I you're think all I right, come... Robin? You you've got party night. You told me. <laughs> no, Amanda's back in now. So ah. um, yes, best behaviour now. That's my last beer. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed your company, boys. Uh, it's, it's been great fun. Thank you so much, Robin. Thank you. Thanks thank so much you. for joining us. Catch you soon, pal. Cheers, yeah. guys. Thanks, Zach. Cheers, Robin. Thanks, yeah, Robin. Thanks Big for coming. Are you guys talking about the moon soon? <laughs> um, yes. yes, sir. <laughs> so because I've I've got a I I, I want to connect that slightly with the tides. Absolutely, uh, man. Please hang out and do that. Yes. Uh, yeah, you got yeah. your marshmallow ready, though. That's the only. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> Yeah, I was just trying to find um what was it my my is it my perspective? He did a, a recent one on tides and I thought it was awesome. It got me thinking um quite a lot about tides. I'll I'll leave it for a minute, yeah. T minus thirty seconds.
Timo. But, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Don't start with me, though. <laughs> right. Well, according to the flat earth clock on the wall, it's break time coming up. Right. Everybody in chat, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. Hang out. It's going to pop back in in a few minutes after everything settles, the dust settles. Again, thank you, Robin. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you, Jason. Hanging out. Are you going to hang out, Roxanne? Or are you going to? Yeah. Go in it for the long haul. Awesome. What I like to hear. That's awesome. <laughs> well, over to you, Mr. Corey. All right. Guess that's my cue, huh? Uh, I got some music for that. We'll be right back. I, I got nothing. It's Friday. It's been a while since I've been on the air. There's a lot. I'm just getting Walt, Walt flashing his, <laughs> his custom t shirt out. Uh, you're right, Zach. <laughs> right, guys. Let's drop us out of here then, Josh, and we'll see you in about 10 minutes, yeah? Yeah, sounds good. I need coffee. That sounds good. I've got a presentation to do, and I've had too much wine. So I, I'm, I'm thinking the same. Maybe about 12 minutes. <laughs> see you in a bit, guys. All right. Uh,